Hello, I've made a, a new AI, it's on uh, Zipkist, the game you can see here. Um, it's a pretty simple racing game where a car has to go uh, down the track because it doesn't have a motor inside. So I've trained uh, this AI for 48 hours on uh, three different tracks. And here, what you can see is how it plays after having been trained for uh, 48 hours on uh, the first track of the game. As you can see, the AI finished the track in about 45 seconds, which is not a bad time, but I think uh, it's driving uh, pretty cleanly. During the training, it took several times the end shortcut by going over the border, and its best time was uh, 35 seconds, but in the end it learned to go through the intended route. I think it's because it found that it could get more consistently a reward by uh, not taking the, the shortcut here. And maybe uh, with more training it could uh, learn to take this cut uh, consistently. This AI only has access to the screen of the game to play and is trained using uh, reinforcement learning. It means that the car learns to drive by itself and tries to get as much reward as possible. It gets rewarded for its speed and the checkpoints it goes through. Basically the AI is a neural network that takes the image of the game and outputs the steering value of the car. It's a value between uh, minus 1 and 1, where minus 1 means uh, steer fully to the left and 1 means uh, steer fully to the right. And the AI does that 20 times per second and plays uh, the game on my computer a bit like a human would. Here, this is the third track of the game, and I think it's the most interesting track because there's a lot of shortcuts that can be taken. On this track, I did two trainings. The only difference was in the reward I gave to the AI, because in the second training, the AI is more rewarded for its speed than in the first one. And what's interesting is that uh, this difference made the AI take two different trajectories. Now what you can see is how the AI plays after the first training. Here, the AI learned to go over the border at the end to take a shortcut. I think it's pretty impressive that it found this shortcut because uh, it's a track I've played a bit and I didn't even know you could do that. And it turns out that it's uh, faster than taking the intended route. But unfortunately, it doesn't finish the track at the end. But uh, this was only trained for uh, 24 hours. Now this is how it plays after the second training on this track. Here the AI cares a bit more about its speed and a bit less about uh, the checkpoints. So here the AI drives a bit better overall because it was trained for 48 hours and it took another shortcut 
The problem with this uh, shortcut is that uh, it misses the checkpoint and can't finish the track at the end. What I find impressive here is that uh, the AI found a way to take this shortcut consistently and can fall on its wheels uh, to keep its speed and not crash. Now this is the last track uh, I did the training on and this is the second track of the game. As you can see here, it learned to finish the track and even gets the gold medal. Now I'm gonna talk a bit more technically about how the AI works and how it can learn so quickly. Because often in reinforcement learning, the environment is sped up or uh, there are multiple environments running at the same time. But here it's not the case, it's just the game Zipkist running on my computer. There are two main things. First is how the image is encoded. And the second one is uh, the algorithm used. So first the image is taken in a region in the center of the screen. So there's only the road uh, on the image. Then the image is uh, resized into a 64 times 64 pixels image. Then it goes through a, a versional autoencoder, which is a neural network that has been trained beforehand to encode the image of the game Zipkist. So, in the end, each image is encoded into a list of uh, 16 values. And from that list, it has to be able to reconstruct the original image. And that's why these uh, 16 values have to represent well uh, what's happening in the image. You can see on the right, uh, next to the game window, there's a box with uh, moving dots. It's the visualization of the list generated by each image. So each value of the list is uh, represented by a small circle. When the value is uh, 1, the circle is at the top, and when the value is negative 1, the, it's on the bottom of the box. And above it is uh, how the neural network can uh, reconstruct the image from this list of uh, 16 values. And if the reconstructed image doesn't look clean at all, it's not that much of a problem because uh, we only care about uh, the list that is representing the image. The second thing is the algorithm used. So it's an algorithm very close to soft actor critic that's called truncated quantile critics. I've tried it because um, it's a pretty recent algorithm from uh, 2020 and I think it performs uh, slightly better than Soft Actor Critic. In conclusion, I'm very happy with uh, how the training turned out, because uh, it worked pretty well on the tracks I tested, but it still has some limitations, because um, the AI needs to be guided by uh, checkpoints. Also, all the information useful for driving has to be uh, in the center of the screen, and if the track is too different from uh, the adventure levels, the image might not be encoded properly and the AI could fail to learn anything. I've put the code I used on GitHub, it's in Python. It's mostly how the interactions between the game and the script are handled, because uh, the learning part is done with the stable baseline 3 library. There's no real installation guide because uh, I think it's a bit too complicated and uh, not that easy to get it running. So it's mostly there if you're curious on uh, how it's done. That's now the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed, bye.